welcome back. This video finally covers the gesture primary data asset, which is central for hand tracking. This is the first Advanced Framework 4.1 tutorial. Although hand tracking existed in the 4.0 version already in a very basic form, I strongly recommend to upgrade to version 4.1 if you want to use hand tracking extensively. Let me start with a bit of theory as usual. Gesture data assets are at the center of gesture recognition by the pawn or more precisely the motion controller. As you can see from the screenshot, it divides a gesture into two parts, the finger positions and the hand position. Finger positions mainly describe what the gesture looks like. Each finger position assigned in the gesture data asset represents a requirement, and all of them must be fulfilled for the gesture to be recognized. The hand position act as additional requirements to ensure that the pawn can distinguish between this and this gesture, for example. For further illustration, let me show you how to describe two or three gestures by creating a data asset for each. First, let's create a new PDA instance using the gesture PDA as template and open it up. To define a gesture, you can use any combination of finger positions and hand positions. But let me warn you, however, that if you use too many restrictions, the gesture will be hard to perform for the player, since each entry defines an exact position of the finger or the hand. You can facilitate that by using the tolerance value, which allows a deviation by a few centimeters or degrees from the required position. Let's go over the possible finger positions first. The Advanced Framework provides five standard positions and you have to use one of them if you want to set a requirement for any finger. If you are uncertain, have a look at the pictures at the right. The positions are extended 180 degrees, extended 90 degrees, contracted outward, contracted inward and pinch. Each position is taken from a real model's hand, so use the tolerance value to adjust for hand size and flexibility. Hand positions use a point of reference which could either be the pawn, the other hand or the viewing direction of the player. You define the hand direction by aligning one direction of the hand, which are defined as in the picture, with one direction of the point of reference. Let's start with something simple like a pointing gesture. For that we need to set all fingers to contract it inwards except the index finger which is extended 180 degrees. The hand position does not help us much here, since probably we want to be able to point into any direction. Regarding tolerance, I usually set it to 2 to 3 cm, since my hands are pretty small. In most cases 2 cm works well, but you will have to experiment on that. Why don't we experiment a bit with the hand position next? A look at what gesture could be useful. And we can ignore finger positions for it, so it's perfect. Basically, the gesture has only one requirement. The forward direction of the player's gaze needs to align with the down direction of the hand. Depending on the tolerance, uh, this gesture can be a bit tricky to retain. So let's try something else. Now we want everything but the gaze aligning with the up direction of the hand, which would look like this. For that, we can use the not boolean here. If you check it, everything except the specified requirement is accepted. As you can see from the example, two gestures can also be recognized at the same time if their requirements are fulfilled simultaneously. Lastly, let's try to combine hand and finger positions for a hand forward gesture. We need all fingers to be extended 180 degrees. And for the hand position, let's use the pawn as point of reference, aligning its forward direction with the hand's forward direction. Well, that's all for now. See you in the next video if you want to know how to use gesture data assets for hand tracking. Until then, bye bye.